What's up YouTube, Johnny here from Seven Wonders, and today I want to go and show you guys my gimmick puppet deck profile. Now this is more so a casual deck since it's pretty hard to go and have them be competitive due to the fact that these are generally meant for rank 8 exceed plays, and they only have a few level 4 and lower cards. And also a lot of them, like a lot of the um, cards in the main deck, or monsters in the main deck are generally um, less than, what, 1500 attack. So yeah, they're relatively weak in here, so they're boss monsters, uh, they're an extra deck, uh, extra deck based uh, deck. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get into the deck profile, and I'll show you how to go, uh, what or my choices are. So anyways, you run three Gimmick Puppet Dreary, dreary Dolls. She, she is one of the uh, easiest level 8s to get out, because she could just easily special summon from the graveyard. Yeah, it's once per turn and everything, but nonetheless, this is generally a... Uh, Whatchamacallit, she's generally the uh, main monster within the deck. And we also run three Gimmick Puppet uh, Magnet Dolls. Now he's also a pretty easy one, because all you have to do is control a monster, or a Gimmick Puppet monster while your uh, opponent controls a monster, and then you can special summon him from the hand. It's not entirely conditional, or it's not the uh, most conditional card within the uh, deck. But yeah, um, he's still a level 8 and he's pretty easy to get out, so... Yeah, you want to run three of them. Or at least I do, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I also run three uh, Gear Spring Spirits. I know he's not a gimmick puppet card, so he doesn't have the name, so which means he won't work with a, your puppet ritual or your junk puppet. But yeah, um, what he could do is that all you have to do is have a your graveyard only full of uh, machine monsters. So yeah, this deck is primarily consisting, or actually all consistent, of uh, just machine monsters. This is the only non-gimmick puppet monster within the deck. Well, the uh, main deck, anyway. But anyways, all you have to do is control or only have machine-type monsters in your graveyard, which means you do need a monster in your graveyard. So if you open up with him, you can't just special summon him right away unless you somehow get some into the graveyard, like probably with your trade-ins or something like that. So yeah, you, special, you have to go and have that, and then you could special summon him from the hand. He's not once per turn, which is pretty good. Um, his other effect is though, where he can only target, where he could target one other, or one of your opponent's monster on the field, and then their attacks zero until the end phase. So that's pretty good, because these are mostly weak monsters. I mean, she's zero attack, zero defense. He's a thousand attack, a uh, thousand defense. He's one hundred attack, one hundred defense. But yeah, um, so yeah, he's uh, great for the rank eight plays. He's a machine himself, so it's not like he's gonna go and void all the other ones if you run more than one of them. So yeah, he's a pretty good card. He's practically a staple within the deck, or at least in my opinion, he is. So yeah, three Gear Spring Spirits. And I think their attributes are re uh, generally different. They're like Earth and Dark, so that's uh, something that's inconsistent with it. Or at least makes it a bit harder. <laughs> Anyways, you'd run three Eggheads. Or at least I'd run three Eggheads. Some people don't. or like Some people like to run two. I like to run three. Because his effect, um, he's kind of like a monster you could have if you open up. And you need to get a monster into your graveyard for Gear Spring Spirit. Uh, instead of using trade-ins or something like that. So his effects are, once per turn you could use one of the effects. Um, you could either discard one Gimmick Puppet Monster from your hand and make him level 8, or you could discard one Gimmick Puppet Monster from your hand and basically be a Gaga -ga Cowboy and deal 800. So, um, yeah, he he's pretty easy. I mean, like sometimes you don't have any Gimmick Puppet Monsters in your hand, while other times you only have level 8s in your hand, so he's, he's kind of like good and bad sometimes, but I like to run three of them because he is a level four and um, rank eights aren't the only things they do, they do go into level fours or rank fours as well, so it's pretty good. You know, you could just deal that eight, extra 800 or something like that. So yeah, I like Egghead actually. I also run three uh, gear changers, reason being is because you can normal summon him and target one of your um, other gimmick puppet monsters such as Egghead or, uh, or Magnet or a uh, Dreary Doll. And you could go and, um, whatchamacallit, he could change that level. You target one other gimmick puppet monster you control, and he becomes that level. Which is pretty good, actually. Because I like the fact that he um, is pretty flexible with his level. And you could go and use him just in case you need to go into quick rank 4 or quick rank 8. Well, I mean, like, you generally want to go and do that. You don't want to go and just normal summon him for no reason and deal 100. No, that's not how he works. <laughs> but yeah, that's his only level. He's pretty good. Pretty weird looking. In fact, they're all weird looking. It sucks how they changed the artwork. They had to censor the artwork. She used to be in a coffin and have blood on her. She used to be that awesome. 
But yeah, so he uh, he could go into um he could uh what you call it? mimic other monsters levels or your monsters anyway. I also um I run two scissor arms because what he does is that he's like a foolish burial. You normal summon him and then you could go and uh, discard or send to the graveyard one other or one gimmick puppet monster from your deck. Send it to the graveyard. So generally what you want to do is send your dreary dolls or your um shadow feeler because uh yeah, she could just special summon from the grave, and he could go and uh, if you take a direct attack, you could special summon him in attack mode, and you take one thousand. But it's kind of like you—he's there for you uh, to help prepare for a um, for an exceed play, and also he uh, what's him call it? Yeah, he basically does that. Or you could just make it to where you take less damage from another attack if it's gonna be game. If you don't, but yeah, so he kind of like scissor arms kind of like helps load the um, graveyard. Uh, he could go and help with Magnet, or I'm sorry, Gear Spring Spirit. So, it's kind of like that. Or you could just send a Dreary Doll to Grave, have him be destroyed that turn because he's only 1200 attack. And then you could go and like special her from Grave by banishing him and then special summoning him if you have him in hand. But it's kind of like a conditional thing. But I like to just empty the graveyard because um, you only have three trade ins because, yeah, you run three trade ins. This is a level, a rank eight deck, so you, of course you're going to need three trade ins to help give it that boost. So yeah, he kind of like helps do that because you have a lot of rank eights here. So anyways, you run one Shadow Feeler. I already explained him, and also one uh, Destroy. So Destroy's effect, he could go. And, you could once per turn, you could target one gimmick puppet monster you control and destroy it. And if he's if he's sent from field to grave, if he's destroyed and sent from field to grave, you could special summon up to two gimmick puppet monsters from your hand. So yeah, it's kind of like if you want to do that, if you have no way, if you don't have any trade-ins or anything, and you just need to go and get out some quick rank 8s, you can just go and do that. So yeah, those are all the gimmick, or those are all the monsters of the deck. I don't know how much that was, you have fun counting. So for spells, you run three trade-ins, I already explained that. It's self-explanatory, primarily full of uh, level 8s, you know, so that's definitely something. <laughs> um, for rank-up cards, since this is a rank-up deck, I run two um, Argent Chaos Forces and one Numeron Force. So our, for Argent Chaos, it's kind of like you, it could recycle itself. Because if it's in your graveyard and you go and uh, rank up uh, rank 5 or higher that turn, you could go and bring it from graveyard to hand. You can only do that once per duel. So it's kind of like that. And also you have a um, Marshalling Field, which if destroyed, it could search for this card. And I run one Numeron Force, reason being is because I like to go and um, negate all other cards on the field. If they have Floodgates out on you or something like that, you could just negate it, and it works like that. So it's pretty good if you want to go and stop their, um, uh, whatchamacallit, like the, uh, oh, what's that card called? The one the Monarchs used to go and lock off the extra deck. I don't remember what it is. You guys have fun. Uh, you guys, I'm sure you guys know what that is. And also, um, if they have like a... I don't know, like a lose one turn or something like that. You could just negate it and then go into another rank eight or something like that. And it's just there so you can negate stuff. If if someone has like some floodgate out on you or something. I run three MSDs. I know it's um, a bit much. You can switch them out for uh, twin twisters and switch them out. You guys could alter it. I, I just like these because that's practically the only back row dis or that's the only um, spot removal card when it comes to back row you have with the exception of a uh, giant hunter. So um, yeah, I just like it because sometimes I like to go and clear out back row, because this deck is pretty prone to back row, you know. So if they have a good flood get on you, uh, rip. <laughs> so I have two, uh, I run two junk puppets. It's like a monster reborn, but for your graveyard and your gimmick puppet monsters only. It's pretty good if you guys don't have anything for Dreary Doll, if she banished everything she had or something like that, or if you want to go and revive one of your, uh, one of your um, guys so you could go and rank them up or something. There's always that. So that's a, it's a good card. I also run two Dark Holes because um, Board Wipe is good and essential. I run one uh, Puppet Ritual. Reason being is because it's kind of a... Oh, what's it going call it? It's kind of a um, conditional because you have to have less than 2,000 or more life points than your opponent. And also you need two, lo um, two level 8 gimmick puppets in your graveyard as well. So there are times where I'm in the lead, but I don't have a board, and I know they'll game me next turn. So it's kind of um, restricting me in that sense, and also you can't conduct your battle phase that turn. So it's kind of restrictive, which is why I prefer a Junk Puppet as opposed to Puppet Ritual. 
So if anything, Puppet Ritual is really good when it comes when you don't plan on attacking that turn and you just want to go and like go into um what you call it number forty and then just rank them up for uh, number C forty. So you can go and um deal some uh, uh, uh burn damage and also draw one card. And we also run the one limiter removal. Uh, it's self-explanatory. Doubles the machine monster's attack. Granted, they'll be destroyed that turn, but it gets to double them for that turn. Which means, since you run... Since these guys generally have high attacks, you know, um, like him, he'd become a 6,000, he'd become a 3k, he'd become a 5k, he'd become a 64, and, you know, so on and so forth. They'll become pretty big boys, yes. Anyway, so for traps, I don't run too many of them. Only six. Marshalling field, because if... You um if you run out of these guys and you ha and you run out of your puppet or not puppet rituals you run out of your um, junk puppets, then you could just turn your guys into uh, level nines and then you could just go into one of the rank nines. And also it could go and if destroyed it could search for uh, Argent Chaos Force, which is also a good thing. You could just set it and then they could twin twist it or something like that, and you could go and have them go neg one for it. And I run one gravity bind. Reason being is because since you're not gonna ever be attacking with these guys with the exception of maybe uh. Egghead, since he's the strongest one with only 1600. So you don't really plan on attacking with these guys. Um, so, and if anything, it's kind of like a floodgate against your opponent, really. I run one Scrap Iron because I actually really like this card. People gen It generally locks people out because they're all like, crap, I can't attack your guy. And if sometimes it could go and give me that one extra turn. So I could go and trade in or something like that and then go and quickly go into a rank 8 or something. And, yeah, people generally take a long time to destroy it. So it kind of saves me there from being OTK'd or something. I also run one Mirror Force. You could definitely switch this out for something. I only have this one because this is the only one I have. And, uh, yeah, you could switch it out for Rippling, Blazing, Quaking, you know, definitely. I run one Compulse and one Bottomless because these are staples. This is meant uh, more so for a casual play because, I mean, it could deal with um, certain decks... But uh, for the most part, it's generally slower gimmick puppets. That's the thing they suffer from, from being too slow, because they haven't gotten support in a while. So, anyways, uh, extra deck. I run two Leos. Uh, you could definitely go for one. I've Not once have I ever gone into two. But I just have the room, so that's why I put in two. The, the only one I ever do is just one. And I run uh, one uh, rank up card. Um, whatchamacallit? C88 Disaster Leo. He's the one that he needs him. Um, his effect is basically what happens is that um, if you have no back row, you can detach one and get a destiny counter. And if you have three of them, then you win the duel. But what happens is that when he's on the board, Disaster Leo, um, what he does is that he ends up um, detaching one and then you deal, how much was it? You deal uh, 1,000. And if you... Um, if your opponent's life points are 2,000 or less and he has no material, then you win the duel. So yeah, he's, he's basically a match winner. Or I'm sorry, not, ma not match winner. I'm sorry, duel winner. In fact, in fact uh, both of them are. So yeah, that's definitely something. 35 is definitely big. He can get over problem monsters pretty easy. So can he. And anyways, I run two number 15s. Um, yeah, giant grinders. Uh, he, he can deal with uh, special summon monsters. I know for a while people used to go on... Um, tech them in with their uh, other decks like outside of gimmick puppets they used to go and do that for um, spot removal when it came to um, special summon monsters and uh, if you yeah if it's an XYZ monster you deal um, damage equal to the original attack and yeah he's a pretty good guy he has 2500 defense not bad not bad um, gets rid of special summon monsters he's pretty good but um, his other guy his rank up guy giant hunter uh, what he does is that you could detect when he's ranked up you could go and detach one and then destroy any card and if it's a monster then you deal um, damage equal to the opponent's monster's original attack. Which is actually really good because he doesn't he's not so restrictive to just special summon monsters. And there are times where people have that one annoying monster such as a marshmallow or something like that, which could be more annoying. So yeah, he kinda like spot removal, he could get rid of floodgates and whatnot. So that's definitely good. So I'd run three um whatchamacallit, three number forties, puppet or strings. I really like him because he's generally the one I go into the most. Because he's 3k, he's a he's a he's a um, blue eyes right there, and his combo with um, his rank up one dark strings is really good. Because what happens is that when you detach one, you can detach one, and then you get to go and have all other face up monsters get um, string counters. 
and your opponent's next end phase, they're all destroyed, which is really good. But when you when you um detach and then immediately rank up, when he special summon, you destroy all monsters with string counters, and you get deal um, damage equal to the one with the highest attack to your opponent, and you get to draw one card. So it's kind of like that's one of the best combos this deck could get off because they do they deal burn damage, and you could go and um, draw a card, which is really good. And he's 33, so he's pretty big as well. So, assuming you didn't pop it ritual into him, then you could go and attack directly. Assuming all their monsters are um, destroyed, because only face up monsters get the string counters. So, yeah, it's, it's really good. You could deal a lot of damage in that aspect, assuming you had a monster face up. And, anyways, that's kind of um, all the gimmick puppet monsters within the extra deck. And I know it's not a full 15, but that's all I did. But if anything, you could just add some other rank fours. Because don't forget, this is also not like not just a rank eight deck. You could go and add some generic rank fours, like um, Honor Arc or Cowboy or any other rank fours you could go and think of, such as like um, Dark Rebellion Dragon or something like that. But yeah, that's the uh, deck profile in the comment section below. Please tell me what you thought of the deck, and don't forget to go and stay awesome, guys. Thanks.